Should you help homeless people? On today's video, I'm going to give you information that will help you make a better determination not only on if you should help homeless people, but most importantly, how and how your good intentions can actually cause these people more harm than good. This video is a strong topic. Some of the things we're going to talk about are deep, so make sure if you're not ready to hear that right now, you may not want to even listen to this video because we're going to dive really deep into a topic in a world that most people don't even understand, don't know a lot about. The conversation will get very grimy and it may be more disturbing than you would want to hear. The best way to help homeless people is to buy them Gatorades on a hot day. If you give somebody a bag with some food that they can eat right on the spot or a drink on a hot day, this will make a huge difference in their lives that day. You walk into a gas station, you buy five or six Gatorades, and you give them to people that are sleeping outside on the sidewalks, it will make a huge difference in their lives. Some people will say no, some people will say yes. And some people will be so thankful that you can see it in their faces. It will give you a sense of satisfaction that you've been able to help somebody. And also that you're not enabling people. Because one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is to give somebody on the streets cash money. I give homeless people cash money because I pay them for the interviews. And as soon as that money is in their hands, they're on a one-track mind one destination is to re-up on their supply, and there's nothing that you can do to stop them. The moment you give them the money, they are gone. Unfortunately, the only way I've been able to secure these interviews is by giving homeless people cash money, and it's sad to say that almost every single time when you give them the money, they head in a specific direction. So it's sad to say that giving a homeless person money is like giving them a weapon that they can use on themselves. We now have a huge subscriber base that is homeless and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here on our channel and I know some of you are not going to like what I have to say on this video but just because you don't like what I say doesn't mean that I don't have the right to say it. If you're just giving people Gatorades and food it should not put you in any type of danger. In fact, people in that neighborhood and community are most likely going to look out for you because they know that you're a helping person. So you should not really be in any type of danger while helping feed the homeless. You should do it in a very quick fashion, however. And make sure that you have more than enough because it can easily cause a dispute. If you have five Gatorades but there's six people, that could easily cause a conflict. So it's important for you to do quick actions, pull up, don't even get out of your car. It's just, hey, I got some food, can I share it? And they're going to run up, grab it, and then they're going to want to talk to you but or thank you, but nothing more than that. I've seen situations where I'm helping people and they'll start a distraction right on the spot because there's a lot of finesse. So it's important for you to just understand that it's a quick transaction. You can pull up to a spot where there's five or six people, get them all something to eat, and then just keep it moving. And always get a little extra. If you think you need three Gatorades, get five because as soon as somebody sees you, giving to other people there might be somebody hiding in the bushes or somebody that sees you and they're going to need something too so just always grab a little extra because when they see that there's food being given out they're going to flock to you immediately so whatever number you think you need it's never less it's always more and a lot of them become master emotional manipulators after all a lot of them spend a lot of time in jail or prison even if they're not criminals they can be arrested for trespassing or other charges so it's important for you to understand that you're dealing with somebody that has a lot of finesse and they can clown you into playing with your emotions they can distract you they can easily manipulate you and put you in a very compromised position I've seen cases where I'll buy homeless people something specific, like they'll tell you, oh, I need this or that or clothing. If you buy them that clothing or that particular item, many times they simply return it and turn that item into cash that they can then use to follow their addiction. If they're panhandling, 
they can't even wear new clothes. And I've actually been the victim of the situation where I'll buy somebody clothes and then they turn around, sell it to get drunk or whatever, whatever their vices are. And then you see that person out there wearing the same clothes because, again, if they're panhandling, they simply cannot wear new clothes. So the clothes that you buy them, they're either going to barter it or they're going to return it. Whether they're panhandling or needing other people to help them, if all of a sudden you change their swag and now they look clean and presentable, well, now they're not a candidate for other people to help them. And you're probably wondering, why help somebody that's only interested in one thing, which is their addiction? Why would you help somebody who clearly is even being malignant towards you as you're helping them? Society needs these people. These people have kids that need them. They have family members that have an emotional attachment to them. And also, those people may try and fail 20, 30, 50, 60 times. But eventually, after many disappointments, they can actually beat their addiction. And they can be a great asset to help other people that are dealing with the same problems. And these problems affect all of us in society. So turning a blind eye to the problem doesn't exactly make it better for anybody. But you got to make sure that you're not being used by them or enabling them. In some cities and some places where people are not generous, people do go hungry for days. In other cities, even the homeless people tell you, nobody is going to go hungry here. It's up to them to get their crap together. And it varies from place to place. Talking about places. Unfortunately, the vast majority of homeless encampments are only a few blocks away from the place where they can score their supply. And this is a really sad situation, but the location where these homeless people are in itself can be a huge indicator to why are these people in a specific place to be close to their supply. A lot of times, the place where somebody is homeless says a lot about how worthy they are to receive help. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but there's different types of homeless places. Some homeless places, the people that are homeless gather in that area simply so they can be close to their supply. In other places, they're homeless because they can be close to a homeless shelter or a place where they can receive help. Pay close attention to the type of place that this homeless person is in. If they're near Circle K's, then they're most likely chasing after lottery tickets, vices, who knows what else, right? But if they're near a homeless shelter, a place that's helping them, then there may be an indication that they're in that area because they're seeking help. So if a homeless person lives in a neighborhood shooting range, then that's what's going on in that particular community. But if for some reason they're near a veteran center or a social security office, they're probably better candidates. Now, if you run into a homeless person who's what I call loners, they're in a neighborhood where there aren't a lot of homeless people. They're seeking to be in the suburbs or they're sleeping in a car in the suburbs. They're trying not to be in the mix You'll find these homeless people to be the ones that travel long distances and they're just far away from the city and places like that. Those are usually good candidates to help because they're trying not to be in the neighborhood shooting range a block away from the trap house where they can easily get their supplies. So the specific place where the homeless person is at should be a huge indicator on to whether you should help them or not. For some reason, I've also found that homeless people that hang out in little groups are usually good to help because they have some type of support network. A lot of times you'll see like, for example, today I was in Tampa and there was four black males and they had one white female. There's always like an outcast in the group that doesn't match the group's profile. Those are usually pretty good places to help people. I've also seen where it's like five elderly people and then they have like a young kid that's tattooed it out. He's there for their protection. So like just try to understand like if you find a group of homeless people where you can tell they're kind of like clicked up together, a lot of times those people are on a better track than the ones that are out there with a book bag and a bicycle. But look, if you're just giving somebody a Gatorade and a bag of McDonald's 
There's no reason for you to discriminate. Everybody deserves a meal. Everybody deserves that act of kindness. I'm just letting you know that so that you understand that there's a place where 85, if not 100% of the homeless people are users. And you can find another spot where it's maybe just 10 or 20% of them are users. A lot of times the homeless people will have somebody in their little clique for sympathy, like in the case of three black males taking care of a disabled white person or of a white woman that's more vulnerable. In those types of circumstances, a lot of times they'll have somebody in that group that is more likely to receive sympathy and people will want to help that person. So they do make weird alliances for their protection because living on the streets is very scary. A lot of times women will run away from a household if the husband's abusing her. In that case, let's say it's a white woman, most likely when she's on the street, she's going to pair up with a black male because law enforcement will not allow a black male to hit a white female even if she's homeless. So in those circumstances, white females are going to seek out black men because they're a bigger protection to her and she knows that she can have some type of relationship. Or And again, we're going to be talking about some pretty deep stuff on today's video. So if you're sensitive, go watch something else. Many times, white females that are coming from an abusive relationship will end up on the streets with a black male for her protection. She could be abused by another white homeless male, but a black homeless male, if he abuses her physically, she will be able to press charges on him so he will not hurt her. So here's a situation where, due to the prejudice of society, Homeless people have been able to make an arrangement that usually works for the protection of both parties. It protects the black person because now he has a white person to do stuff that he will probably not be able to do or to get sympathy in places where he won't be able to, like with dealing with law enforcement or dealing with people trying to evict him. So it's a protection for him. It's a protection for her. It's a mutual benefit relationship based on the prejudices of other people in society exterior to the homeless world itself. And the same thing can be said when you have a lot of elderly people and they'll have a young person. It's usually it's going to be a person covered in tattoos from head to toe, but he protects a group of elderly people. The elderly people need the protection of this thugged out dude because there are definitely people on these streets that will take advantage of elderly and disabled people to rob them of everything they have. So the disabled people, they need this tattooed out, gangster looking, dug out dude to protect them. So they have a mutual benefit arrangement as well. And this gangster tattoo on his face looking dude, he actually needs the elderly people because when law enforcement shows up or somebody else shows up, he is completely unprotected and those elderly people, the fact that he's protecting them means that they will be the ones to protect him from prejudice of law enforcement or outside forces. So again, that's why so many times you'll see these strange alliances on the street because people are vulnerable. A guy covered in tattoos, the law enforcement will be restless on this guy's case. But if he's protecting a bunch of elderly women, it protects him from law enforcement and the elderly people they're out there sleeping at night and there are people that will definitely go after those people to victimize them and rob them and if he's there it's a deterrent so these types of alliances should just give you the idea that people on the streets have to become masterful emotion and circumstantial manipulators to stay alive so if you enter the world of homelessness as somebody helping you could definitely end up in a very precarious situation if you don't have street smarts. So these people that are living on the streets, their circumstances have turned them into masterful manipulators and pure finesse artists. And they've done that as a survival technique. So if you enter that realm of homelessness, and you're not aware of how these manipulations and finesses work, you could easily end up getting victimized. Think about prison. If right now we're in a prison and all of a sudden that prison gets flooded with commissary, there's going to be fights, there's going to be gambling, it's going to cause complete chaos. 
In the world of homeless people, while it may be geographically in a place next to other people, it's a confined world among each other. So if you go out of your way to excellingly help a particular person, that may actually turn that person into a target of other homeless people, where if you give them possessions, they may just want to get rid of them right away to make sure that they don't become a target because homeless people prey on other homeless people. Just about every homeless person that I've interviewed has mentioned how other homeless people victimize them. So you have individuals within the homeless community that target other homeless people because they know that law enforcement will not protect these people. Just last night, I was listening to police radio and two females attacked a male who had a bicycle that was stolen from them. And then there was overdoses left and right. So while you're sleeping on those streets where those homeless people live, it's a complete zone of violence. A needle costs 25 cents and there's people out there that are using dirty needles and they're ruining their lives. They're getting infections that are life altering simply because they don't have a 25 cent needle. A lot of times people out there in the streets don't have a $10 medicine and they'll get an infection and end up having an amputation. So your life, an arm, a leg on the streets, none of that has any value. There's people out there that have an amputation because they don't have $40 for medicine. Some people out there die on the streets because they don't have $80 for a hotel room. So don't think that giving a homeless person $20 or $40 cannot make them actually be in a more desperate situation than if you didn't give it to them. Why do you think they don't allow money in prison? People who are homeless are many times even more marginalized than people in prison because normal people will go to jail in prison normal people don't usually end up homeless in the sense of you know regular day-to-day -day. people out there on the streets are very desperate and you handing them a 40 dollar bill you could cause somebody to overdose you can cause somebody to get robbed you can really create a lot of problem because a lot of these people just don't have the ability to even manage something that small that's why they're homeless it's not that I don't want you to do great things for homeless people or I don't want you to be generous. I want you to be generous, but I want you to also understand that money in itself is weaponized on the streets and that your generosity and good intentions could actually cause somebody harm, especially when most of the time they're only going to use that money for their own personal detriment because of their addictions. Let's talk about people who are mentally ill people who are disabled, people who have a serious disability. Unfortunately, those people who are mentally ill, autistic, they're real victims of society and they do deserve our help. A lot of times those people who are real victims, let's be clear, you could get hit upside the head by a brick tomorrow at your workplace and you could now be disabled you could now have a brain injury. You could, anybody, your sister, your parents, any one of us could legitly be disabled, legitly need assistance. Unfortunately, these streets are cold. I've seen people who are legitimately disabled, yet they have a gambling addiction, yet they're alcoholics, yet they're addicted. And that makes this situation that much harder because now you have somebody who circumstantially as a society, we have an obligation towards these people. But now this individual, because of their own incompetence, has been victimized by other homeless people. Now they're addicts. Now they're gamblers. And even today, I noticed somebody who clearly was disabled spending $20 on a lottery ticket at a gas station. Could I intervene? Could I do anything to help them? Absolutely not. Clearly, somebody gave that person that money with good intentions, and here they are at a gas station gambling it away. Another individual that I personally help has a drinking and smoking addiction. It's so hard to help somebody who is disabled, is in a wheelchair, has a disability, 
yet they have these vices and habits that they picked up on the street that are completely detrimental to them, and any money or help that you give them will be used to cause that person their own destruction. So as a society, we absolutely have the obligation to help these people because they really are disabled. But as a society, we also cannot enable them. That is why you have to find ways of helping people that just get them through the day, get them through the moment. Could that person use that money to buy food that day or something they need? Absolutely. But unfortunately, they're more inclined to buy substances that will cause their own detriment. And that includes things that are legal as well. A lot of times homeless people don't understand that something that is legal, like pharmaceutical or recreational, or something that they can buy at a shop somewhere, they think because it's legal, it's okay. You can have an addiction to a lot of things that are legal. A lot of things that you can buy can be detrimental to you. So let me just be clear that it's not just illegal substances. A lot of times people say, oh, it's they're always going to buy something illegal and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give them money. I'm not going to enable this person. Well, there's legal things that homeless people do like gambling, lottery tickets, other vices and habits like smoking and drinking that are completely legal yet completely destructive, especially as somebody who's living on the streets. And you really got to understand that I'm not going to enable somebody to smoke. I'm not going to enable somebody to drink or to gamble, even though those things are legal as well, because they're not productive. The problem is that you're distributing money or assistance to somebody who clearly hasn't been able to manage themselves, thus they're homeless, that, that in itself is an indication that the person you're helping hasn't been able to manage their own finances. That's why even the U.S. government, when they hand somebody an SSI check, if it's for a mental disability, it doesn't even go to the person they're helping. It goes to a family member that's helping them because if they give it to that person, they may end up giving it to other people as gifts or mismanaging. That's why they're disabled for a mental disability. So you have to understand when you allow or directly help somebody who's already incapable of managing their finances, it could be to their own detriment. So to my many homeless subscribers, stop typing because if you're so good at managing your finances, you wouldn't be homeless, would you? The vast majority of us in society see money as an asset, not a liability. That's why we don't think twice about giving homeless people money. But unfortunately, the way we normal people think isn't the way people on the streets think. And that is the wickedness of homelessness. That's something that's an asset to most of us becomes a liability to them. And inherently, even if you disproportionately assist them to change their fair lot in life, it doesn't help them. It's a personal disposition that no matter how much you do to help them, their end result will always be the same. You can change how much money a homeless person has, but you can't change that person's disposition in life. That's something that's completely out of our control. So even if you give them money, a lot of times they're going to end up eventually going back to the same situation. Should you help homeless people? The bigger an asset is to you, the bigger of a liability it becomes to that person because of their personal disposition. And you can't change people's dispositions. What you can help is their day-to-day -day conditions. It's been analytically proven that people who work for law enforcement are disproportionately more likely to get a divorce, more likely to have a domestic dispute at home, more likely even to become a user themselves. So even if people in law enforcement, the workplace stress can lead to family and social problems, imagine what being homeless does to somebody. The state of homelessness within itself is an agitating force that makes people more to propense to addiction and other harmful habits. Homelessness is a condition that also agitates mental health crises which means that just the state of homelessness within itself will promote some of the stereotypes that we associate with homelessness, leading a person who initially, when they become homeless,
may not be addicted may because of homelessness become more propense to addiction and that means that homelessness is a trap that you cannot get out of and once you become chronically homeless you endemically are going to become propensed to all these other habits and ailments the condition of homelessness will definitely make your mental health worse it'll make your physical health worse whatever ailments you had or whatever addictions or bad habits you had that led you to homelessness are now going to be an even bigger compounding multiplier into ensuring that homelessness makes that outcome even worse. It's like putting water into a bucket that has a leak. No matter how much water you put in, it's always going to leak out. And there is a point where the criminal, the perpetrator, becomes a victim of themselves and their own habits. And trust me, there is a point where somebody goes from being a perpetrator, an addict, a thief, and now the only person they're really hurting more than anybody else is themselves. And that spirals that person even deeper into their addiction, even deeper into their pain and suffering. And that's why it is important for you to help these people but you're not going to help them by giving them money. You're going to help them by giving them a little bit of food. And most importantly, a smile and a glimpse of hope. And just remember that you are ignorant to the real sufferings and pains that these people are going through. And that you'll not be able to fully understand that person's situation. And the best thing you could do is just share something small with them and a smile and that will bring them that person joy for that day. And you have no idea how far they carry with them those small acts of kindness. I have turned around to see homeless people literally praying after you give them food. Or if you give them help, they ask for your name. Because they want to use your name in a prayer to thank for your existence. To give thanks that you exist as a person and that you came to them because that's how significant it is to them because really their own future isn't in their own hands. It's in the hands of just somebody giving them help. Their personal disposition will always bring them to the same conclusion. You're the only one who has the ability to bring a smile or a moment of happiness or just relief from their suffering life of misery. So don't hold back from doing nice kind acts to people out there even if you feel that you're enabling them if you do it on a large scale you're gonna reach people who need it even if in fact 80 percent of those people or 85 percent of them are out there because of their own decisions and addictions you're still being more effective than the government and i'm sure if we went downtown to a city council meeting and gave everybody in that room a drug test there would be People there who are receiving very generous incomes who are also addicts themselves. So if we pay taxes and give money to them, why the crap not give help to somebody who's on the streets? Being generous is also... It, generosity doesn't just help the person who's receiving. It helps the person who's giving as well. Many times homeless people who are addicts and are dealing with a guilty conscience are some of the most generous and sharing people you're going to meet because they found that by giving to other people, they can feel better about themselves. And that is a very true statement even for us. Perhaps you have some personal issues you've worked out. Maybe your conscience is bothering you about something you've done. And by giving to other people, you'll feel better about yourself. Generosity is really a therapy for you as well. One good reason to be generous to people is if you've dealt with oppression and racism. Many people find that if they go to somebody who's of a race that's oppressed them or been discriminatory towards them, by helping people of that race, they're able to weed out the racism that they've inherently built up hate for that person because of discrimination. So it can also help you relieve a lot of your own personal anxieties or hard feelings that you've developed for other people due to that group's discrimination against you. That's why many times you'll find that homeless people will say that it's people from other races 
who are best towards them. And that simply stems from the idea that many times people who have been discriminated and oppressed are likely to help that other group more so they can feel better about themselves and resolve within themselves not to feel hurt and pain. It's a great relief. So if in the past you've dealt with racist feelings for other people or you've been a victim of racism, whatever side of that story you're on, by giving the people, you can actually help resolve those hard feelings and they'll make you feel like a whole lot better of a person as well. Remember earlier in the video we talked about a person's personal disposition? If you have material things, it's not because you have them physically that it's yours. It's because of your personal disposition. So if you have a good personal disposition, you're always going to have money and you're always going to have wealth. So giving to somebody else isn't going to make you less poor. And same thing, giving to somebody who's poor isn't going to make them rich. It's your own personal disposition that places you economically somewhere. So unless you're literally living paycheck to paycheck or hand to mouth, helping other people isn't going to take anything away from you. You can definitely help people in a lot of small ways that doesn't even affect you. Clothing that you don't wear anymore. Food that you're going to throw out anyways. It's little things that don't even take anything away from you that could be significant to somebody else. And it may be difficult for you, a person living a normal life, to really comprehend the struggles of homelessness. People who are drinking dirty water, people who are eating out of a garbage can, people who are eating food that's rotting, people who are using needles that are already dirty. You know, people out there, their life means so little at times. And, and it becomes just a humiliation. And they become accustomed to that humiliation. I recently did a video where I went panhandling for the first time. And I gave the money to the people that were next to me. It's not like I even kept the money. But it was just so embarrassing and humiliating and humbling at the same time. But people that are homeless become desensitized to their own inhumanity. And that is a difficult and almost impossible thing for somebody living a normal life to comprehend. And there's a lot of things you're not going to comprehend about this life and their personal disposition and the struggles that they go through. Some people have been out there for years. They don't have a cell phone. They don't have a news outlet. And everything they get as far as information comes from other people on the streets who probably have problems themselves and have sometimes extreme crazy views. You want to talk about sheep or people that just don't understand how to re-enter society Someone who's been living in a homeless camp for four to five years, they don't know anything about the news that's going on in the world. They don't even know that they have to selectively pick which news sources they're going to listen to. I know in the comment sections, 100 people just get a job and they do not understand, again, personal disposition of how all these things work. It's not, it may be simple for you to go get a job, but it's not simple for them for various reasons. And again, just information alone is a huge wall for homeless people. I was recently listening to a homeless person. We're having a conversation. They're like, well, the economy is bad right now. And I'm like, the economy is bad right now. Where are, you listen Where are you getting this from? He's like, well, I listen to Fox News on my little radio. She has this little crank up battery radio. The stock market's up. The YouTube pay rate is up. Everything's up. Real estate values are up. The unemployment rates are low. We're not in a bad economy, but they listen to some radio station and they hear that it's uh, there's something bad going on. And in their world, they might think there's a recession going on, which in reality, it's not happening because that's how limited their information realm is. It's even the information that they get is so inaccurate, they might think we're in a recession. So you're dealing with people that even the information that they're obtaining or they have or the things that they believe in, they're getting it from other people who are mentally disabled or addicted or just not 100% there. Or they just get access to some local radio station who's spilling out some horrendous political crap. And they hear that and they believe it and they don't know any better. And these people are completely lost. A lot of times they support the parties that are making the policies that are destroying their lives and making their lives difficult. They just don't know any better. I've met homeless people who listen to these crank up radios in a homeless camp somewhere with solar power batteries and they think that why even try to get a job? We're in a recession right now 
and we're actually at the lowest unemployment we've ever had. Like, jobs are everywhere. But in their mind, yeah, when you run to somebody who hasn't had social media and hasn't had, like, uh, the options to select what they're going to put into their brain, it's just whatever radio stations out there locally that they're listening to, man, that person, you know, they're eating all the garbage of today's media and they don't even know that they have to filter that. They just think that that's the only thing that's out there. Whatever comes into the little crank-up radio, it's crazy. Most of the time, it's whatever the local rhetoric is. So somebody in California may be tuning in to like a CNN network. Somebody in the South might be listening to Fox News. And that's just whatever the regionalistic trend is. And they just go with that because it's the only thing they know. Like They don't even have the capacity to think for themselves. Everything's predetermined for homeless people. And that's another aspect of homelessness that a lot of us don't understand as well. A lot of times homeless people say, well, I'm free. They don't even get to pick where they live. They either got to live two blocks away from their dealer or two blocks away from a homeless shelter where they can get a can of food three times a week. So they don't even get to decide where they get to live. A lot of things are actually predetermined from them in law enforcement, dealers, and organizations are the ones that are determining where these people get to live. We could talk about this topic endlessly because there's really a lot to explore. I think this video has been long enough already. But the last thing I want to finish off with is, have you ever wondered why the cops don't just shut down these trap houses? And the answer to me was always perplexing until recently doing these homeless camp videos and interviewing homeless people and being around so many homeless people. I realized that the reason they can't shut down these trap houses... Last night I'm listening to police where the cops are like, oh yeah, that's a trap house, that's a dope house. And you're thinking, they know where it's at, but they don't shut it down. Why? Well, unfortunately, I had discovered the sad answer to that question. And the sad answer to that question, the reason why law enforcement doesn't shut down these trap houses, is because the strain that doing that will put on all of the other social services. you got a trap house that's serving 80 different people. Can you imagine how many of those people, when they start, you know, they'll start their uh, withdrawals, they'll start losing their minds, they'll get fevers, shakes, they'll get irritable. That would put just a massive strain on local agencies. And then on top of that, those people are going to go somewhere else looking for their other dealers, which means that those homeless people are now going to push into another area. The chaos and madness that shutting down a trap house brings to society is that those 80 users are now moving somewhere else, going through withdrawals, going through panic attacks, simply going out there and overloading the emergency response system and organizations is why they don't shut down these trap houses. Law enforcement knows where every last one of these houses is. You give a homeless person $20 and they are running to the nearest trap house. It's not even preventable, you, you, you know, they're, that's what they're going to do when they have $20. Law enforcement knows where every single one of these houses are. They think they're slick, but they're not. Law enforcement knows where they are. I've been to cities that I don't even live in, and I can drive through a city and be like, oh, it's on this block. So it's not like they don't know where it's at. It's the chaos and how that trap house being shut down will overwhelm the local emergency services the reason why law enforcement doesn't just go and shut them all down because it creates other problems in other places. At least now they have it contained. At least now if they get a warrant, they know where to find people. But it's that chaos that ensues when those people go elsewhere that makes it impossible for law enforcement to want to go after that. So we can see that this is a very complex situation. And the best you can do is just be a kind, helpful human being. Your money isn't going to change these people's lives. It's their own personal disposition as a person, and none of us can change that. But we can be kind, helpful, bring a smile to somebody's face, and be the best person we can. Homelessness is dangerous. The lives that they live are scary, and the dangers that they face on a daily basis are dangers that you may not face, even though you live in the same communities they do. So while we can't even properly understand the situation, the best you can do is just be kind, be helpful, but understand that out there in the streets, a $20 bill is a liability, a weapon, and it can actually help destroy somebody's life. And good intentions alone don't do all that much. A lot of times law enforcement has good intentions, 
and they have to tolerate things in their communities that they don't want to tolerate because a lot of these things are out of their control as well. There are individuals who end up homeless and they don't get caught in the trap or they escape the trap. And that is an episode that we can't make yet because we're not at that stage yet. But I do know there's people who've escaped the trap. There's people who have got out of it and they have moved forward. And a lot of them might have failed 50 or 60 times before they did it. So that means that there have to be 50 or 60 idiots like me and you out there helping people who are simply going to continue to disappoint. So if you're homeless, do not give up on yourself. It may take more tries than what you think or would want be a disappointment to you. And to the rest of us in society as well, don't give up on them because it may take 50 or 60 tries to get somebody to get their crap together. But if nobody's there to help, it will never happen. So if you're homeless, don't give up. And if you're not homeless, don't become harsh against these people. Just help them.